So uh, reconstructive urology is very much a um, specialty that's multidisciplinary. We involve plastics and colorectal usually as part of our uh, team. So it's a, very much of a team approach. And what we're trying to do is repair uh, damaged ureters, urethra, genitalia, and how has it been damaged? With either one, it's a congenital anomaly, so they were born with an ab uh, abnormal urethra or ureter or genitalia, uh, or absent bladder or something like that, they, and they're still suffering from the consequences of this congenital uh, anomaly, or it's cancer survivorship surgery, in the sense that they've been treated for their cancer. Usually it's some kind of extirpative surgery. In other words, they removed an organ, and now there's, this is collateral damage from that surgery, so either from radiation, chemotherapy, or the surgery, and we're trying to fix the collateral damage, so either scar tissue, uh, urinary incontinence, fistulas, you know, urine leaking from wrong uh, places, so that's the second aspect. And the uh, uh, third aspect are iatrogenic or traumatic injuries. So the iatrogenic doctor caused or nurse caused in the hospital from either a catheter or something along those lines, or a patient who fell and, or in a car accident and injured their kidney, ureter, bladder, urethra, and then we see them to fix them. So the uh, intent of reconstructive urology is really quality of life surgery. So, uh, so we always say when in cancer survivorship that yes, it's good to be alive, but it's important to have good quality of life, not just uh, uh, quantity, quality is also important. So if you're living with tubes in your back and wearing a diaper, you don't have much quality of life. So. Uh, what we're trying to do is get uh, patients to as normal as possible, to reconstruct, fix the bladder, ureter, urethra, whatever it is, so it's as normal as possible, so they can urinate normally, can have normal sexual function, can get tubes out, uh, kind of thing. You know, 30 years ago, most people didn't know what we were doing, but now it's much more of an accepted uh, a subspecialty. Uh, we have a, a very established society of reconstructive urologists, National Society, uh, and now we even have fellowships ourselves uh, and uh, around the country, uh, even myself. Uh, I'm a, I, I kind of joke that I'm the, the child and that my fellows are grandchildren of my uh, fellowship director at UCSF. What a fellowship is, is usually one to two years of additional training after a residency uh, training in urology. So we subspecialize uh, sub in a smaller uh, aspect of urology. And reconstructive urology, oddly enough, has only been around for maybe 30 years. It was a new, it's a new specialty. So when I did my fellowship from 96 to 98, I did a two-year fellowship, um, it was actually something very new. I was only like the fourth or fifth fellow that they had had at UCSF uh, there. And at the time, there were only three centers in the whole country that you could do a, a fellowship. And now there are like 20 fellowships, but at the time there were only three. Uh, so you do an intensive training, usually one year of research, basic science research, and one year of clinical training in a specific field. So I did it just specifically in reconstructive urology for, the, for, that, uh, for those two years. I did a research year and a clinical year. I would say probably 80% are men and 20% are women in terms of uh, collateral damage. You know, more, more men have traumatic injuries, you know, just in the nature of a car accident or a fall. Uh, men have more congenital anomalies of the genitalia, urethra, and ureter. And more men have pelvic cancers, you know, colorectal cancers, all those kinds of things, so which you can find collateral damage from surgery or radiation or chemo for those uh, problems. The most common surgeries we do are reconstruction of urethra, either from a congenital anomaly or from a traumatic uh, injury, uh, either a car accident or a traumatic catheter. 
and they've failed multiple other surgeries or endoscopic telescope surgeries. And the, the, that's the number one thing that we do is, is reconstructing the urethra is number one. Uh, number two is some kind of ureter or bladder reconstruction. In other words, patients who've had cancer of the bladder and they have the bladder removed, you can reconstruct and make a new bladder out of bowel. We usually use the right colon or the small bowel to make a pouch. So uh, you make a, either a catheterizable pouch or we make a pouch that you can connect to the urethra so they can urinate normally. And then uh, injuries like scar tissues or injuries of surgery from usually from hysterectomy in other words, when they remove the uterus uh, and older women who've uh, had fibroid tumors or for cancers, many uh, times, I would say one to two percent of the time, the ureter is injured and then we have to, then they develop a, either a fistula, a hole between the vagina and the bladder, or they develop a scar tissue of the ureter and we have to fix that. And then the last thing is more kind of cancer survivorship post prostate cancer surgery. Patients who are totally incontinent wearing diapers or impotent and they need a prosthetic device. So there's a, a mechanical device called an artificial urinary sphincter which we implant to control uh, patients who are totally leaking and wearing multiple diapers a day or we put in a prosthesis for sexual dysfunction afterwards. But there, it's all collateral damage from cancer therapy and it's either prostate cancer or colorectal cancer, you know, because the prostate and rectum are in the pelvis and then it's very easy to have uh, collateral damage of the bladder or ureters because it's just close by uh, kind of thing.